Hey guys, it's Joe. It's Tuesday the 17th of May on an absolutely gorgeous day today. Uh, a little bit breezy, but quite hot. Temperature's been around 25 to 27 degrees Celsius. So uh, really good for this time of year. And um, the, gardening, the garden is definitely benefiting from this lovely hot weather. So um, I'll use this opportunity and give you guys a uh, quick garden tour. So over here, this is my wife's, uh, this bushy area. This is my wife's mini project. And um, these are new potatoes. The variety are Charlotte's. And um, as you can see, it looks like my wife's got some green thumbs. So hopefully at some point we'll get some delicious new potatoes. And this is the first time we've actually grown potatoes. So really excited. And then over here, and this, uh, this is a tomato tower. So we're growing some, uh, some Roma VF variety tomatoes. So these are a plum tomato variety. So looking forward to that. And then down here, this, this uh, sickly looking plant is my miracle berry. Um, so it hasn't done too well in the past, but I've repotted it into some more acidic soil. Miracle berries need um, acid, slightly acidic soil to flourish. So hopefully this will bounce back and uh, the leaves will be a lot greener in the coming days and weeks. And then over here is my um, one of my olive trees. This one's in a pot. As you can see, we've got um, a number of uh, flower buds there. So that'll be opening up soon. So we're doing really well. I actually took this out of the ground in my allotment that I'm no longer using. And um, it's doing really well in the pot. So that's, that's really cool. And then over here, you've seen in my previous videos, these are my uh, tropical guavas. This one here is a pink tropical. And that's uh, looking nice and green and healthy. And this one over here is my um, Egyptian white tropical guava and that's also doing really well i think it needs a little bit of watering because of this hot day but um you can see the trunk down there and hopefully at some point i'll um i'll get some fruit from this one down here these are all my uh colombian pink guavas seedlings i planted all of them by seed from a um from a colombian pink guava fruit and they're actually doing really well outside um, in these uh, pots. So I've just potted them up a few, um, just over a week ago. I think it was over a week ago. And they're doing uh, really well in the pots there. And then over here we have some, um, what are these? These are red currants, nice and healthy. And uh, if I can see, there's a currant over there. So we've got a few currants dotted around on each of the plants there. I've got three plants. And they're flourishing and looking really healthy. And then we have over here a uh, pawpaw, so North American custard apple. And um, it's looking nice and healthy. This is a seedling variety, so it will take uh, several years before it uh, flowers and uh, has fruit. Um, when it comes to seedling varieties, you're not sure what you'll get in terms of quality um, of fruit. But still, nice thing to grow here. So that's, a, that's my pawpaw. One of them, I have um, a couple of other varieties that are, one of them's in the ground, which is a Prima, which I'll show you in a minute. And I have a sunflower variety. And then over here is an avocado. This one I took from um, a sprout that was growing from a fruiting avocado in London. So that's looking pretty cool. I think it needs a little bit of feeding. Leaves are a little bit yellow. And then over here we have some pineapple guavas. Two pineapple guavas in, in the pot. They were both in my allotment, which I've took them out of the ground. And uh, they're flourishing in the pots, which is cool. And they're actually uh, showing some flat, um, pushing out some flower buds here. Guys, if I move a bit closer, you can see. So, and, and that's on both of the trees. If I move over to this one here, you can see some flower buds over there, guys. So that's cool. So pushing out new growth, nice and healthy. 
and then we'll move over to my um, what are these pomegranates so I grew all these from seed and as you can see they're nice and healthy I wish I could put them all in the ground but I um, haven't got any space um, for these I do have pomegranates in the ground which I'll show you in a few minutes but yeah there we go and then we have some corn in some pots sweet corn and um, some citrus not too sure what the variety is unknown but doing pretty good over here is my Rio red uh, grapefruit now in the past this has been such a sickly tree hasn't done much for me um, but what's really funny since I lost the greenhouse it's no longer in the greenhouse it's actually you know it's gone through the winter um, the second half of winter anyway and um, it's doing pretty good as you can see lots of green growth there a little bit of kerning which I'm not too sure about but um, still lots of new growth so that's the Rio red grapefruit in a smallish pot but I don't think it needs a large one as yet and then over here is my black Pakistan mulberry now unfortunately I've had to heavy prune this um, because we had late frost and it killed the limbs off um, but we've got some new growth so that's a black Pakistan mulberry now I think we'll move over to my fig tree so here is my Domenico Toro fig tree and we have many um, well we've got about five uh, different varieties grafted onto this fig tree um, and this this particular tree gives me absolutely delicious fruit so it's a bit windy but last couple of years we've had an issue with these uh, moths uh, the fig moth and their caterpillars which basically just decimate the, the leaves and even eat the fruits but I've actually sprayed this tree with uh, uh, organic spray called Spinosad and it's actually done a really good um, job I can't see any worms on here so that's really cool so we've got a graft here this is the latest graft which is Noir, Noir de Corom and uh, it hasn't pushed out any growth as yet but I think it's a, it's a, a good graft because it hasn't dried up and um, I think I can see some swelling bud swelling there so hopefully that'll push forth some new leaves and then we'll move over to this graft over here which is this one here is a smith unknown so we're not too sure if it is a smith but either way the fruits is absolutely delicious We've got some new growth here and uh, I'll show you the, the graft union over there so really cool so that's the smith we have another graft over here which is doing really well this is the Kadota pushing out lots of new growth here again I'll show you the graft union just over here pretty cool and then we have another graft another variety which has a different leaf pattern it's got two branches there that is the Dalmati and we have the graft union again over here and then we have one more, just move back, whoops, one more graft, really, really healthy. This one here is the Spanish black and you can see the graft union there. So yeah, pretty cool tree, a cocktail tree I call it because it has uh, a few varieties on here and it's now pushing out lots of new growth. Hey guys, it's Joe. It's Tuesday the 17th of May. On an absolutely good. Yeah, sorry, I had to pause the video there for a minute, but um, yeah, this tree is pushing out lots of new growth. Um, unfortunately, I did lose uh, a lot of the Braber crop um, on this tree. So that's the first fruits of this tree um, because of the uh, late frost that we had in April. But we do have a few fruits on here. As you can see we've got one large one there and a few dotted around the tree and hopefully I'll get some uh, main crop on here so moving on this is my in-ground pomegranate tree it's been in the ground for oh I'd say at least four or five years doing really well um, nice and healthy nice and green 
So at some point, hopefully, this, this tree will uh, flower and fruit for me, if I'm lucky. Over here now is my um, white chatoot or white Pakistan mulberry. And as you can see, it's really healthy. It's had a lot of growth. And this one was not affected by the, the late frost. Um, but I did lose the, uh, a lot of fruit on there. They just dropped. I'm not sure if it's just because the tree is still young and um, just wants to push out lots of growth. But yeah, nice and healthy. It's the white Pakistan. Down here we have some uh, seedling chilies, different varieties, ultra hot chilies. Uh, not for the faint hearted, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, I love my hot sauce and hot food. Over here is another pomegranate tree. Now this one was uh, affected by the frost, uh, lost a lot of its leaves, and but now as you can see, it's pushing out a lot of new growth. So that's cool. Over here um, is an, uh, it's a persimmon, Japanese uh, persimmon. And, uh, sorry, it's a bit windy. I obtained this one from a, a Japanese guy um, he had quite a few of, them, a few of these on his allotment and I purchased one off, the, off, off him and um, he said he actually uh, planted this from a fruit uh, from his parents garden back in Japan so that's really cool so no idea what variety this is but it is healthy doing really well as you can see and then over here these are my uh, Musa St Helens hybrid bananas and as you can see, nice and healthy, pushing out new growth and uh, overwintered with no problem whatsoever. Blown in the wind and th these particular variety, the, the, the leaves are actually quite strong. So um, if you are looking for a variety that doesn't shred much in the wind, uh, the Musa SP Helens Hybrid is one to get. So we've got the, this is the main, the mama. I started off with and these are the pups here one and another pup here and I think there's actually one starting to come up guys just there so that's cool we've got some tomatoes uh, sorry not tomatoes strawberries hanging up here so looking forward to eating these when they start to ripen nice and some runners there and we'll move over to my where should we go? Okay, this is my um, Australian finger lime. And for the first time, guys, look, lots of buds there, flower buds. Some of them are actually starting to open there. Let's just focus there. But yeah, all over the tree, flower buds. So I'm hoping that I'll get to taste my first Australian finger lime. Look, all over the tree unbelievable so yeah this is this is great great news so i move over to my other citrus so i've shown you my um my real red grapefruit but this is my clementine lots of growth guys look at that since the last video i showed this is lots of growth so growing really fast and we've got a number of flowers flower buds all over the tree so very promising and hopefully we'll get some fruit off this uh, clementine this year we've got the yuzu in ground let me just move a bit so we have the yuzu that was recently planted but it is pushing out quite a bit of new growth there so that's really cool just means that it's uh, establishing itself in the ground so that's the yuzu and then the satsuma over here another one in ground lots of new growth guys and i think we do have if i move a bit closer somewhere around the tree yep we've got some flower buds guys so yeah and on the other side too so really cool all right we shall move on to my this is uh my sunflower poor poor variety so it's in a pot still debating whether I want to put that in the ground and then we have a another pineapple guava in a pot this is the mammoth variety and I've noticed we've got some flower buds here guys as you can see so very promising 
and they're all over the tree, the flower buds. We'll move over to my um, large pineapple guava and let's have a look if we've got any flowers on. Okay, so this is my large unknown, but gives absolutely delicious fruit. For the last three years, I've had some really tasty fruit from this tree. And um, let's see if we've got any flower buds appearing. We've got lots of new growth, that's for sure. There we go. So flower buds there. So they'll soon get larger. I mean, this is the earliest that this tree has pushed out flower buds. So very, very promising. And then we'll move over to my smaller Triumph variety. And guys, I mean, we've got tons of flower buds on this one all over the tree. I mean, it's just, just unbelievable. So this will be a really good pollinator for the larger one next to it. Flower buds everywhere here. Great news, great news. Nice and early too. So all over this tree. So it's a very fruitful tree here. So that's a smaller triumph. And then we'll move over to my um, lemon guava. So I put this, uh, I planted this in a raised bed. Um, ooh, I think it was autumn, if I can remember. And uh, it lost a lot of the leaves when it was indoors um, because of the spider mites. But I can see a lot of new growth here, guys, as I move closer. You can see it's starting to push out new growth all over this tree. Lots of new growth. So, yes, this warmer weather is really helping. So we go down the tree and the trunk, we can see some more new growth there. So yeah, really, really cool. And then we have, that's another fig tree in a the pot there. Hasn't leafed out as yet. Well, I'm starting to leaf out. This is Vasilica white. But over here, this is a persimmon. So this is my Nikita's gift. And as you can see, lots of new growth. So it's in a cage, um, so the dog doesn't bite the trunk. But yeah, nice and healthy, lots of new green growth. And this was actually in my allotment and it didn't do really well, but it looks like it's uh, establishing itself here and enjoying my garden rather than the allotment. So yeah, really pleased about that. Then we'll move over to my Prima pawpaw. Now this had lots of flowers. You can see it leafing out here. It had lots of flowers. I did try to hand pollinate it. And I mean, loads of flies were attracted to it, but as yet, I mean, that looks like a fruit here, but if I move it, that will probably, no, it's not coming off actually. Yes, it will come off. There we go. So not pollinated. So, I mean, you know, it's still young. Hopefully we may get one fruit, you never know. But um, yeah, it may need some uh, cross-pollination from another variety. All right, so over here is my olive tree, humongous. I did give it a, a prune, but I didn't give it a top prune. I just pruned the, the middle of the tree just to allow a lot of airflow, which helps the tree to stay nice and healthy. All right, I think we're gonna move over to my jujube trees. So we'll start with an unknown variety here. I mean, look guys, it's pushing out a lot of new growth here. A lot of new growth. Very, very early in the season. So really promising. Now this one hasn't fruited for me as yet. Hopefully it will this year. But yeah, as you can see all over the tree, lots of healthy green growth. And uh, yeah, doing really well in my London garden. No problems at all going through the winter. And then here is my Lang variety, which did fruit for me last year. Um, although the fruit was quite small. Hopefully now it's, it's a year later. It's a little bit more mature. And uh, we'll get some larger fruit, larger and sweeter fruit. Plus, I mean, this is leaf leafed out a lot earlier than last year. I mean, it's the 17th of May and uh, I mean, look at the growth. I mean, it's just crazy. Only the other day, um, the leaves were a lot smaller. So 
guys i mean look, look at that growth there that is crazy crazy growth on this jujube tree so yeah really quite a vigorous tree this i mean people say that jujubes are quite slow growing but i mean not this one that's for sure not this variety so yeah really healthy and i'm really excited about getting my jujube fruit from this tree this year okay so we'll move on to my i'll go show you my low quat this is the roseanne variety as you can see very healthy it does have a few crumbly leaves but that, that's from the winter as you can see a bit crumbly from the winter but lots of new growth here and uh yeah really healthy tree and i've got a new addition to my garden this is a um, compost bin and uh, i've been putting my scraps in here just fruit and veg but i've also added some creatures in here which if i can find them i don't know if i can find them but yeah i've put some uh slow worms which are le legless lizards in there so that's going to have a lot of food to eat from the all the, the bugs that are in there and uh just wanted to add the, um, add them into my garden add that wildlife there um okay so this is my rojo brillante persimmon tree on the right we've got two here which are pretty much merged into into one but uh this one is the rojo brillante and we've got a number of flower buds on this tree so really really healthy i'll try and get a bit closer to show you guys okay guys so there's one flower bud i'm on i'm actually on a ladder because uh, annoyingly most of these flower buds are um to the top of the tree if i can focus there's a flower bud right here and uh i don't know if you can see there but anyway we've got a number of flower buds on this raw hobelante so hopefully we'll get um we'll get a lot of fruit the tree's nice and healthy and that's the main thing but yeah we should get a number of fruit this year and then over here is the uh chocolatino that's an italian variety and uh, it's not as um, leafed out as the Rojo Brillante. That's because it was affected uh, by the, the late frost. But uh, we've got a number of flower buds on there. So hopefully for the first time, I'll get um, a decent amount of fruit from here. And then we have behind the persimmon trees, another fig tree. I'll just show you down the, the single trunk there. I pruned it back to one trunk and then it's branched out and this is a Spanish black and um, I've also treated this tree with uh, Spinosad um, organic spray to deal with those um, leaf rollers and those um, moths there you go pretty tall tree and in the corner at the back of the garden is my um, seedling um, avocado grown from a um, Ettinger seed and as you can see, we've got some crumbly, crispy leaves. That's the winter effect there. But lots of new growth again. Nice new growth on here, guys. So yeah, this tree has been in the ground for four, there we go, four to, um, yeah, around four years. And doing nice and healthy. And uh, last but not least, I have to show you my uh, raised bed, guys. So we've got uh, we've got some beetroot in here. I've, I've caged around it so the cats can't get in here and go toilet. But we've got some beetroot down there, some chilies. It does need a little bit of watering and probably some mulch. But they're doing well. We've got some chilies there and some corn. So yeah, really excited about this uh this season's uh fruit and veg in my garden and i hope you've liked this video guys if you have please give me a thumbs up and uh if you haven't subscribed to my channel channel i'd appreciate you subscribing happy gardening guys